friends, it's August. I hope you are all doing well. Today is Saturday and it has been such a lovely day so far. I haven't been able to like vlog as much or take footage of what I've been doing, but just know that it's been a really wonderful day and I've been really present and enjoying it. But I do have some wonderful reading updates to share with you all. This morning I was able to finish a truly wonderful book and that was Einstein's Dreams by Alan Lightman. Basically it follows um, Albert Einstein as he's working in a patent office in Switzerland, but it really doesn't talk a whole lot about his story or his narrative, but it mainly follows his dreams. The dreams that he has take place in different like worlds or realities where time moves in a different way than it moves in our world, which is very linear. It's just like, you know, sequential order, straight line, whatever. So in these dreams, this is before he works up his theory of relativity, there are different worlds and perspectives of these like places where space and time move in different ways where time doesn't exist at all or the future doesn't exist or people don't have concepts of future or they don't um, like things move really really slowly and in some other cities time moves really fast there are just so many amazing different like little vignettes in here of different places and i didn't know this until halfway through reading it but alan lightman is actually a physicist but don't fret because this does not read like a physics textbook at all it is just like really simplistic writing let me see if i can find a really nice quote in here probably one of the earliest ones in this uh particular chapter it takes place in this world or realm time is sticky so basically what has occurred in the past just is the at the forefront of the people's minds and they're not really able to let go of the past and a lot of these just feel like almost metaphors for us as humans how we tend to like really attach ourselves to the past there are just a lot of things that were really applicable and it was very existential uh so if you like books that are very metaphysical existential i highly highly recommend this one and this is like a little paragraph just so you can understand the human emotional depth and weight <laughs> and gravitas no what 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 yeah okay it reads in another house a man sits alone at his table laid out for two ten years ago he sat here across from his father was unable to say that he loved him searched through the years of his childhood for some moment of closeness remembered the evenings that silent man sat alone with his book was unable to say that he loved him, was unable to say that he loved him. The table is set with two plates, two glasses, two forks, as on that last night. The man begins to eat, cannot eat, weeps uncontrollably. He never said that he loved him. Five out of five. Um, I absolutely love this book and I've already recommended it to my parents. I will be recommending this one forever and ever, I think. It was just so beautiful and gorgeous if um it really reminded me in terms of like how it made me feel uh like that existential like angst and dread but also this like realization of how beautiful life is and how beautiful time is and how we don't really think about time as how we're living it right now other than when we're kind of fearing the future or feel like we don't have enough time we don't really think of it day to day like oh like this was a a system that's been created to manage time like to count down time the clocks have been invented that's an invented thing that's a man-made thing and just the concept of it is so interesting to me so after i finished reading einstein's dreams i did my random genre generator and it landed on romance which is really exciting because i've been wanting fluff but as of late, I actually just finished a few books that were quite fluffy. So I went to my bookshelf and I decided to pick up Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabrielle Garcia Marquez. I am so excited for this. This copy is absolutely stunning. I actually got this copy off of my dad's bookshelves. I actually found so many wonderful books that uh, are kind of classics that I really, really would love to read and he let me borrow them. So thank you, dad. I appreciate you so much. And this is one of his copies. I know this isn't a traditional romance book, but I do have a fluffier romance I could have chosen from, but this one just seems so wonderfully written. I am not 100% sure what this book is about. I just read the first paragraph and already I was 100% intrigued and was like, yep, this is the one. <laughs> I was between this and a few others, but I'm glad I went this route. The first sentence reads, it was inevitable. The scent of bitter almonds always reminded him of the fate of unrequited love. 
that's so beautiful that is the writing style that i like that is the writing style i love this i have very high hopes for so I'm very excited. This will be my next read. My plans for the evening are, I think I'm actually gonna quickly run over to get some like, <laughs> some Sour Patch Kids from my local little neighborhood little store. Uh, I really would love something like really sweet and sour right now. And then I actually do have to do a little bit of work. I have to do some editing for a photo session that I had today. And I think I'm actually going to start re-watching Gilmore Girls. I haven't watched it in a very, very long time, but it just sounds like so cozy and really nice right now. And it's been so long since I've seen it. So I think it would actually be really fun to re-watch it just on my own as kind of like a background thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that get cozy uh, once I get home and just start working for the evening. It's about 3 p.m. on Sunday right now. Some reading updates. I am really, really loving this book. It is not easy to read though. <laughs> it's been a while since something has been this difficult for me to read. Not that the content is difficult, it's actually really funny, but the words that are used um, in the sentence structure is just very difficult to digest. It's like if you start skimming, it you're lost, you're gone. So <laughs> I've definitely had to really take my time with this um, in order for me to fully digest it and understand it. And not even just understand it, but then also to appreciate it. It has such gorgeous language in here. And I think it's truly like delightful. It's just really delightful so far. Um, I have been reading this for about, I would say like maybe a grand total of like 45 to 50 minutes and I'm only on page 30. I'm assuming this is early 1900s in Spain and the descriptions of like the tropical environment, the humidity, taking siestas, um, all of the gorgeous like botanical lusciousness in Spain. So today while I was grocery shopping, I was like, I want to make just like a pina colada smoothie. So that's what I did. And I drank it while reading this and it was just such a mood. I did look to see if there was an audiobook version available at my library for this, just because it might help me read a little bit faster or um, get a little bit more immersed in it because it is kind of difficult to read. Um, but unfortunately all the copies are taken so I'm gonna just kind of keep an eye on it and see if there are any copies that are available anytime soon that I can snag. But overall I'm really enjoying this but again I'm only 30 pages in. I have 318 to go and it's been like an hour of reading so this one might take me a while this is definitely what I'll be reading all this vlog but hopefully I'll have some updates for you all
Hi friends, I just got done filming a super fun video that I am actually going to spend the rest of my evening just working on editing so I can get that up tomorrow, which is going to be Tuesday. Did I say it's Monday already? I don't know. <laughs> I spent the first little bit of the morning, the first few hours reading Love in the Time of Cholera, and while I'm enjoying it, I finally realized why it's so difficult to read this freaking book, and that is because there's no dialogue. There's no dialogue in this book. It is literally just chunks and chunks and chunks of just description and detail and character backstory. Um, it's bouncing through time quite a lot. There's still story happening, but it's just not told in the, st the stereotypical kind of narrative way of like, here's characters and here's present day characters and here's a conversation they had. It's like it's all being reflected upon by this other person, this third party. Uh, so it's all written in third person and just ornately describes the settings and what these characters are doing and like yeah it's charming and it's cute and I like the atmosphere and I'm not sure where the story's going and it's interesting but I'm like I don't oh this is gonna take me a lot of time to read and I realize that's why it's not very quick is because yeah there's no interactions between characters and when there is it's all told from this like other almost like an aerial perspective of who it is and what's happening and who's talking. I'm not sure, but anyway, I'm back in my cozies. I'm importing some footage from today's video that I just filmed and I'm gonna start editing that. Hopefully this vlog is still entertaining for you all even though I am barely trucking through Love in the Time of Cholera. Oh my gosh, um, I'm really glad I made that realization today though because I was like, why? <laughs> I was getting kind of like mad at myself. I was like, why is this so hard to read? Oh my gosh. But alas, that is um, ye old update for you all. friends happy tuesday it is so sunny over here um i am just basking in my window there's a lot of street traffic so if you hear that i apologize i just really want to be by this window because it feels so good like i feel my face heating up and it's so lovely i wanted to share a few updates with you all since i'll be ending the vlog today um so yesterday, Alec and I made these absolutely amazing jackfruit sandwiches. They were so good and it was just really nice. We also went on a walk uh, back to the place that we went to before, but it was, yeah, absolutely freezing yesterday. Last night I was able to read maybe like eight pages of Love in the Time of Cholera, which I have here, um, before falling asleep. Even just reading eight pages, that's like a good, <laughs> at least 20 minutes of reading. This book, when I say like it is just taking me a long time, I am really not kidding. 
this is such a dense book. The narrator is like all seeing. It is this thing that knows, like it's telling the story from the past tense and it knows things about the future and where the characters are currently or if this is like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I apologize again for the street traffic. Like everyone is out on the town today. I do enjoy it while I'm reading it, but it's so hard to get into a flow state because it is just kind of all over the place. Like all of a sudden it'll focus on one character and then we'll kind of go into like their entire backstory and a little bit of their future where they end up. Or here's a lot of ornate detail about one specific subject and then they just like quickly move on to the next thing. So it's really hard because when you get invested and you get in a flow state, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, but that character doesn't actually matter. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Whoops, okay. So this morning I finally looked up on just on YouTube for an audiobook. And then I found this wonderful gem of a human named Julia. Julie or Julia? I'm so sorry. They read Love in the Time of Cholera starting from page 82 because apparently they were listening to an audiobook and it cut off in the middle of like the chapter chapter two. So I, it gave me so much willpower because at the time I was on page like 68 or 69. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll just read to page 82 and then I can follow along with this person as they read it out loud, which is just such a public service. So thank you so much for doing that because this book would have just been something that probably would have taken me even longer. So with their video, we were able to get from page 82 to 103 in an hour. And that's actually really, really good, especially at the rate that I've been going. Um, that's even like a lot quicker. And I can't express how much easier it's made reading this book. Like it feels fun. I just get to kind of sit back and read along with my eyes, but listening to the words, it is a complete game changer. So if you want to read Love in the Time of Cholera, I really, really do recommend finding an audiobook version. It has helped me so much and it's awesome that um, Julia or Julie uh, did this and put it up on YouTube for free access and it's just nice to hear it be read out loud by like a normal human and they made like little side remarks that I could definitely agree with because I was intrigued or gasping or confused at the same time that they were so it was just a really lovely experience and thankfully they put out videos for the entire rest of the book so i am really really looking forward to finishing this with julia that was just such a wonderful experience and thank you thank you so much you have really saved this book for me <laughs> So that is um, where I'm currently at in Love in the Time of Cholera. I am just at the start of chapter three. Right now it is just, yeah, it's a lot of backstory on where these characters have been and what's been going on. So that's where I am at currently with this book. I am waiting, eagerly awaiting a call from my local indie bookstore that my book has come in and once I get that call I'm going to leave the house, go pick up that book, and then I'm going to run and get a few groceries. Oh my gosh, I have to show what Winston's doing right now because it's really cute. So I'm going to sign off and pass it over to a cat who's just adorable. Okay, bye. Alright friends, it is the end of this little reading vlog. Um, it is about 8pm now and I'm currently editing this vlog and realized, wow, I never gave a synopsis of Love and the Time of Cholera, so I thought now would be a great time to do it during my wrap up. <laughs> 
This book follows two lovers, Florentino and Fermina. They had a very passionate romance at a pretty young age, like as they were teenagers. Florentino proposes marriage before Fermina is graduating from her secondary school. And while she says yes, they keep it really quiet and under wraps because her father would not agree to this marriage. Um, turns out he finds out about it, he's really upset, and he basically sends himself and Fermina like super far away and they stay away for three years and Fermina and Florentino are communicating via letters since he works um, in the telegraph industry. So they're passing telegraphs back and forth for three whole years. She finally journeys back to her hometown where they're able to meet again and where it's left off basically she says, na na na, I don't want to be with you anymore. So this book literally catalogs how they had this really kind of a shooting star romance. It was like really bright, really fast, and just kind of dissipated really, really quickly. And then it follows 50 years later when Fermina's husband passes away. They were together for over 50 years, and Florentino just kind of comes out of nowhere at her deceased husband's funeral, like the first night that she's a widow, and is like, hey, I'm back. I want us to be together again. And from there it just went completely backwards and is now slowly unraveling the story of what led up to these things, what happened in those 50 years, um, and the romance they had before everything kind of disintegrated for them. I have no idea where this is going, um, but that is the plot as of right now. Who knows what's going to happen? But I do think that is kind of the premise of this entire book. Um, I am really excited to dig into this further and hopefully have more updates for you all very soon. I also got to go to my local indie bookstore today and pick up a book that was on hold for me, which I am really, really excited to dig into. I don't want to share much about it right now because I want to fully read it until I can express my opinions. I think I was a little excited in saying how good it is without actually finishing it, so I need to like shut my mouth. Um, I've been telling other people, like real people in my life, like, oh my gosh, you should read this without finishing it. And I'm like, what if this is bad though? Like I have to stop saying how good something is before I actually formulate my entire thoughts on it. So I will reveal that book uh, to you all very soon because soon I will be coming out with a pretty large book haul of the books that I've kind of accumulated, either thrifted or I've found or I've purchased. Um, in the past like few weeks so be on the lookout for that and that is the end of this reading vlog this was a lot shorter of a video than my other vlogs and i really did not get through that much reading and i'm really surprised i've put a lot of time and energy into reading in the past few days but i really have not gotten very far this book is definitely proving to be a a more difficult one and I think my brain needed it. I think I needed to slow down my reading and really pace myself and understand and enjoy a story. So I'm really excited because this is a full experience being able to listen to it, listen to someone narrate it who's just like a real person and read along with it. So it's been really fun. Thank you so much for joining. Stay cozy my friends. Bye!